Hello, my name is Bill Carrington, and I am a educational media design and technology student, and this is my AR final presentation. My action research was based around student motivation, and specifically towards using online tools and media to improve student participation in my beginning Photoshop class. The journey of my action research has been rewarding in so many ways. Along the path of this, I have become such a better teacher, student, and member of the academic community. My father always tells me, you never know what you don't know until it's too late. And as a teacher, there were six solid years that I was ignorant to the more sophisticated methods of communicating with my students. The nice thing about teaching, though, is you get opportunities to become better than you were yesterday. Over the last 12 months, doors have been opened, veils have been lifted, and keys were issued to how I was going to be a better teacher every day. Reading authors like Mark Prensky and his understanding of the digital native, James Paul G, who knows the value of making education a willing act and a reward, and Howard Rheingold, who understands that the power of information is not being able to answer trivial questions from memory, but rather an ability to find the best answers efficiently. Month one media literacy and research methodologies really started me off with a new focus. Then in month two, we began learning about the brain and the differences in learning styles in the multiple learning theories class. In here, I was introduced to authors like Howard Gardner and Brian Jensen. And I began to see better where I was missing pieces to my teaching puzzle. The internet and its media were tools I could now utilize. Months three and four, training in motivational development and emergent technologies in a collaborative culture, gave me the legs to challenge my fear of not knowing how this was all supposed to look and sound. The blogging and podcasting all gave me some solid ideas for what big steps I wanted to make. At this point, I had an idea, but I just couldn't put my finger on what my actual action research problem needed to be. Finally, in month five, in the education design and evaluation course, learning the Addy system brought all the pieces together for me. By looking through the problems in the analyze, design, develop, implement, and evaluate system, I figured out that my problem in my class that I could fix was one of student motivation. I needed to find a better way to engage my students during class. Looking back at my past classes, I had found the holes inside the puzzle that still needed to be fixed. Many factors led me to narrow my focus to the motivational aspects of education. My class is taught early in the morning for a college class. And often, the students have to sit through hour-long lectures on subjects that may not affect them in a day-to-day -day manner. What I needed to find was a way to pass along this information to them in ways that they could better retain and have more access to the small minutia that happens inside of an art course. So after grinding my teeth over and over, I found the question. Would using asynchronous content create more time for me to work one-on-one -on -one with my students? Because if I could find time to sit one-on-one -on -one and help them through problems, help them through the techniques that we were di discussing inside class to talk about the theories, I thought that possibly they could find better correlation with me on how this stuff could affect them in their day-to-day -day lives. My idea was to maximize the amount of time that I could teach them without losing their attention. So what I did was I limited class to discussions on art theory and then the rest of the class turned into productive lab times where I could work one-on-one -on -one with each of the students. I created ScreenFlow tutorials of Photoshop techniques to allow my students access to the techniques and the processes behind the imaging that we were doing at any time that they needed it. Because 
though it was nice for them to learn it in class, they found that going back and having access to these techniques was more beneficial after hours and when they were doing the homework actually made them more efficient and made their work that much better. I now had time to answer questions, to sit down and to find out what it was that each of my students really wanted to get out of the class. This opened up another avenue for me that I figured out in my learning management systems class. And that was that my students needed a place to be able to access the videos, but that also gave me a chance to house class discussions and critiques in a similar area. So I started looking into social networking sites. The one I chose for the cycle one was Ning.com. Ning worked well, but the learning curve for the new site left the students with something to be desired. So in cycle two, I changed from Ning to Facebook and just used a group page for the entire class. The familiarity of the site was very popular with all the students and they enjoyed using it. By leveraging the power of social networking, I now had a way to interact with my students inside and out of the classroom. This way, they were always thinking about photography and using Photoshop, and it better integrated into how they worked their daily lives around their homework, how they were viewing the world, and into their understanding of design and good art practice. By implementing these changes, I was able to deliver the information in a way that would have a far transfer of knowledge, since it allowed the students to watch the techniques being performed as I narrated the steps synchronously while also being able to use text to emphasize complicated steps in an easier manner that I picked up in, months, in the month six class in digital media and educational applications. Being able to hold discussions allowed the students to take time to ponder and think about their answers and how they could help be more constructive towards their classmates. Critiques were great because it allowed the students time to sit and understand the images, to compare them against one another, and to see where true quality really lay. To measure all this, my cycles were designed with the same pre and post test on general Photoshop knowledge and design. Then each cycle had a unique attitude survey that helped me to make changes from cycle one to cycle two and also get an idea of how I might better serve my students in the future. Many of the questions dealt with the idea of how students were using the internet and their usage of the internet for things in and out of their academic lives. Through all the data that I collected and all the ideas and surveys that I administered, one of the most interesting discoveries was that by meeting my students in a way and a place that they were all comfortable they did perform better, but more importantly to me, they seemed to enjoy the process of learning more. And as Prinsky stated, we need to prepare students to be lifelong learners. And so, if my students enjoy the process of learning, then they might just keep doing it.